Good morning. This is Dr. McDaniel. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist in New York City, Midtown Manhattan, and I'm bringing to you all things health related for women. Thank you for joining me here today at GYN Corner. This is the Facebook Live presentation, and I'm going sideways because, as I mentioned yesterday, sorry, there's a fly who loves my hair I loves I put essential oils in my hair um, I'm going sideways because the YouTube presentations I'm, I just use my cell phone for these so the YouTube presentations everything's all squished and narrow so I thought I would until I can get a better um, video system I'm going sideways because it looks better on the YouTube so I'm going to kind of go back and forth on being sideways on Facebook and looking better on YouTube versus looking normal on Facebook and then looking scrunched up on YouTube so um, hopefully before the end of the year I can get my act together with the, the video system I'm not super techie uh, so let's see today is hump day. It's Wednesday, October 9th and as I stated on the the information on the title I'm speaking about Dong Kwai again and yesterday I gave information about Dong Kwai and I mentioned that I'm, I'm speaking about it because it's a, a tra traditional Chinese medicine it's been used for thousands of years uh, for a myriad of problems. It comes from China predominantly, but it's also produced in Japan and Korea. And um, Dong Kwai is what we call it. The scientific name is Angelica sinensis. And in the traditional Chinese medicine, it's called Deng Gui. Uh, it's also known as female ginseng because of its invigorating effects for female uh, reproductive aspects. So I'm speaking about it because years ago in the um, mid to late 90s, I had a lot of menopausal patients who were using Dong Kwai for perimenopausal symptoms. Um, Climate, what we call climacteric symptoms, so hot flushes, sweats, irritability, mood swings, emotional issues, the usual. And for whatever reason, I think it kind of fell out of favor once uh, a lot of the push for hormone replacement for menopausal women, for um, estrogen and progesterone hormone replacement fell out of favor, I think is when uh, women's decreased using the Dong Kwai. And it also got a little bit of a bad rap for some of the potential side effects for it. I remember this was a nationwide um, issue with some of the potential side effects, which I'll go into momentarily. But recently I had a young patient who started using and asked me, uh, whether or not she should continue using Don Kwai for really bad menstrual cramps, for dysmenorrhea. So she had a, a history of being doubled over in pain, missing school, and now work for the first day or two of her cycle. She started using the Don Kwai and, she, and it decreased the cramps, relieved it enough where she's able to now function, just takes a painkiller or two. So it made a huge difference for her. So, as I mentioned um, yesterday, uh, the Dong Kwai has a lot of health benefits. It um, also has a lot of um, uh, supplements that's rich in. So, it's rich in vitamin A, B3, vitamin C, vitamin E, cobalt, biotin, uh, potassium, magnesium, and iron. And the, the active ingredients, which really is thought scientifically to give it its gusto for why it's so helpful in certain aspects of um, healthcare is ferulic acid, coumarin, and lingust lingustilide. Now I looked those up because obviously I'm not an herbalist, I'm a gynecologist, so I'm familiar with the usage of the herb but not what the ingredients were. So I looked up those ingredients and it makes sense why the Dong Kwai is being used in certain aspects of medicine. So the coumarin has an anticoagulant effect, it's a blood thinning effect, and it's used um, 
in medicine, we use warfarin and coumadin. Those are derived from the herb coumarin. So we use warfarin and coumarin for an anticoagulant for patients with like mechanical heart valves or who have had pulmonary emboli or deep vein thrombosis. So that plant uh, gives us the medication Coumadin and Orphrin, and it also has a small component in Dong Quai. Uh, ferulic acid is an, anti an antioxidant. So antioxidants, I think we all know from the dark uh, fruit, dark berries like um, blueberries, raspberries and such, antioxidants anti, um, fight free radicals and free radicals um, are the cause of oxidation and tissue damage so they help decrease uh, the, the I guess the physical effects or the manifestations of aging they use it a lot in beauty products for wrinkles and sagging skin and such and then the last one is the lingostilide this one has an anti-inflammatory effect uh, it vasodilates and it's a muscle relaxant so those three active ingredients uh, lend uh, the reasons why we use it for certain health aspects so the dong quai for women is used for painful periods dysmenorrhea the muscle relaxant effect and the vasodilatation or the blood vessel dilatation effects would lend uh, the explanation as to why it's helpful for menstrual cramps. We also use it for perimenopausal symptoms. So again, um, hot flushes and sweats, the vasodilatation and the muscle relaxant, but also the dong quai is what we call a phytoestrogen. So it's chemical effects also are seen in the body as a mild or a weak estrogen and we treat hormonal problems with hormones so the weak estrogen effect is going to explain why it's really helpful with hot flushes and sweats and for some of the hormonal mood instability issues uh, emotional angry irritable all of those also why it's used in premenstrual symptoms PMS or PMDD because of those same phytoestrogen effects and the muscle relaxants. It's also used in uh, menstrual migraines and the uh, lingostilide would explain that because menstrual migraines um, are from vasoconstriction so the vasodilatation or the expansion or the dilating of the blood vessels increasing blood flow and the phytoestrogen because of the hormonal uh, aspects of it it's also used for infertility for women with irregular or um, abnormal cycle links um, spacing so it helps to as the phytoestrogen it helps to support the female hormones which is predominantly estrogen and increase more regular and consistent ovulation patterns now of course all of those statements are not founded in human studies but they have been um, fairly well uh, supported in animal studies and chemical um, research for the ingredients and what those ingredients do. The um, not kind of non-gynecological aspects are that a lot of the traditional Chinese medicine, they use it for uh, high blood pressure and for um, arthritic issues, for joint pain, and they use it for anemia, so iron deficient anemia because it does have uh, iron supplementation in it and for uh, constipation because most likely because of the vasodilatation aspects and um, estrogen also helps increase uh, bowel motility to some degree. So those are interesting aspects for the Dong Kwai and the way people can use it is um, a myriad. They come as tinctures so you can find them at all the health food stores uh, online or as we call it brick and mortar. So they come as tinctures and depending on the type of Dong Kwai how it's been produced determines the 
concentration or the strength of it. So you can use several drops, you can use three to four drops, or you can use 10 to 15 drops. Most people will drink it as a tea. So an herbal supplement and a tea. Uh, some people will rub it directly on their skin. Uh, for some of the non-gynecological aspects, it's used more as a direct application on the skin. And for the GYN aspects, it's usually used as tinctures or drops in a tea. Now, the potential adverse effects or side effects, uh, one, you're not supposed to use it if you have any kind of hormone sensitive cancer. So endometrial cancer, breast cancer are classic. Uh, you don't want to use it for if you've had a history of those cancers or uh, you don't want to use it for long periods of time or in very high dosages if you're postmenopausal because of those estrogen effects it can potentially increase the risk of endometrial or uterine cancer and the risk of breast cancer so if it's used postmenopausally it really should only be used briefly um, sporadically throughout the year so I tell women six to eight weeks or three months max um, or use it until you see an improvement in your symptoms and then stop and then use it again when you see an improvement in your symptoms and then stop. So usually uh, a two to three month time period and then take a break for at least three to four months or six months ideally and then go back if your symptoms really start to rage. Um, not supposed to be used in pregnancy because it hasn't been tested on humans, definitely not developing humans which are babies. Uh, so I wouldn't use it in pregnancy and I also wouldn't use it uh, if you're breastfeeding because it's going to get into the breast milk and be delivered to your baby. And um, not supposed to be used if you have, if you're already on a blood thinner because of the anticoagulant or blood thinning aspects of it. And uh, let's see. Uh, there have been anecdotes, anecdotal reports or sporadic hither thither reports of people having issues with high blood pressure, even though it's a, a muscle relaxant and it vasodilat has vasodilatation aspects. If you're on blood pressure medications and uh, you're taking it, it can either have um, the expected effect where your blood pressure may drop too low or a weird effect may where it may rise because of, it's a weird interaction with whatever medication you're on. It could potentially cancel out the blood pressure medicine that you're currently taking. So I hope that's been helpful information on Dong Kwai, uh, a traditional Chinese medicine used uh, quite a bit for treating uh, female problems or uh, reproductive issues. Thank you. And um, um, if you have any questions or any concerns, please post the questions here on the Facebook channel. Uh, please check out the YouTube channel, post any questions or topics for ideas, and let me know how you, if you like what I've been presenting, if you have uh, suggestions to go into further information or to delve deeper, or to, as they call it, to niche down. And uh, please follow the Facebook, please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out the podcast. We're on eight different platforms for the podcast, including Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. Thank you very much for joining me here today. This is Dr. McDaniel at GYN Corner. And please uh, click the like button, subscribe and follow to get a heads up on when I'm placing more presentations and what the topics will be. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Be back at the next presentation. Bye.